Okay, just a little short setup here. I'm testing, or going to test. I haven't gone and recorded any videos yet in regards to now my two servers. Irrelevant at the moment. I have a server, number two, that's running my, my encoding server, a copy of it. And I just recorded the Through the Eyes of Necrosis number 11. And I'm editing more of them right now. I received a warning. And I saw this warning before. And a little perplexing. But ultimately the warning was Invalid Font Family Medio UI which is the font I used to overlay a couple of texts, and it got replaced with this. In previous videos I've done with the server, did the same thing. So, I can only assume the server right now does not actually have the Mario font, and my thought was, well, why? And I forgot that my normal computers are all installed normally in Jap Japanese or have the added language and Mario is part of the Japanese language pack as far as I'm aware so I went into control panel and went into the this is the server so not my desktop and I want to see if I add a language of Japanese where the hell are you going to be? There you go, Nihongo. If I add this, will that install the languages? Download and install language pack. I have a few more ideas with multi-server usage of the Adobe Media Encoder, but I'll be recording more on that later, so... I got a couple ideas because I don't think Adobe has any distributed rendering clustering type of features, but I have two machines with a total of like 32 logical processors. If I was in a point where I wanted more, why not at least come up with my own system? And if it does autoencoding, this is what I'll be investigating. Why not have a folder for server one, a folder for server two? As I'm working and saving projects, just alternate which which folder I send it to, let the respective server do that. It all goes back to the same NAS and so on. But that'll be, I'm going to worry about that a little later. For now, my encoding demands are actually not that great, especially since I've been so busy with having way too much fun with virtualizing and the servers and stuff. Oh my god, I got so many things I want to record too, and I got to start streaming on Twitch more because I'm going through the affiliation process, assuming it never gets past that tax audit thing. Alrighty, installation is complete. So now I should have the language pack. And I suppose all I can do oops, is just re encode it again and see if it does that error again. Before I do that, let's see if I can. Does this have WordPad? I wonder what text editor Windows Server has, if any. I was going to see if I can check what fonts are on here, but, uh, yeah, notepad's not going to have it. So let's reset the status, and going out of my mouse. So it's a 10-ish minute or so clip. I will let that encode, and we'll see what happens from there. Well, it did finish, but it still completed with a warning, so that was a fail.
Still does not like Medio UI. Oh wait, we can look at form our fonts in here. Let's see, is Medio? Oh fuck you! It is. There is a Medio UI right there. So why would you be invalid? Time to Google it. So let's see how good my Googling skills are. Got a control panel, all can find font, select a font and delete it. Font needs to be TTF. Get in a computer, baby, baby, damn. Yeah, I'm trying out Opera. It's been a long time since I used it. Ever since they switched switched to the web, uh, GDI, GDK, whatever kit. It's been a long time. This happened to me after upgrading. I had to reinstall CC because 2017 sucked. So, the fact that I upgraded, I was using like 2014 or 2015, and only recently switched to 2017. Yeah, that sucks. I wonder if I can do any editing on the video, or not the video, rather the, let's see, reset. Maybe not in here, but let's try this, I'm curious. Let's fire up um, Premiere, since I did put it on here, and I have reason to believe I have reason to believe that if I was to Google up tweaks on audio crackling and stuff, it may be possible for me to do real-time audio work on the, the servers as well. So recorded and processed audio comes out just fine after our little doodads to tweak it and get it to actually recognize an audio interface, but real-time audio, which is a big monstrous beast in and of itself, it was crackling, but I'm willing to bet there's some tweaks to be done to correct it. There may not be, I don't know. It's to be investigated, but for the most part, I'm not hurting on any resources on the editing end of, thing, end of things. Uh, the need for remote editing is not a thing for me right now, so it's a low priority. It'll be done just for the hell of it at some point, but ultimately, that's not my bottleneck. Just gotta hurry up now. Come on. I got shit to do. Sort of. Kind of. Actually, I really do have a lot of shit to do. <laughs> so let's go ahead and open project. Now, where the freaking heck would it be? It's not on the NAS. The, I'm still saving it at the moment. I've decided not to completely trust the NAS yet. But I think eventually I'll be doing a lot more straight into the NAS. Right now it's just doing the encoding output into the NAS, but the recording itself is being handled on the desktop and the desktop's hard drive, which is Symbiosis. YouTube. So this is the one. Project was last used with the Mercury playback engine. That's because of my desktop. Not available. Only software will be used. That's fine.
that seems to work just fucking fine. What the hell? See, look, there's my Mirio UI. Oops. I completely closed it, but must be an issue specifically with Adobe Media Encoder then, as we saw a little while ago. So either A, there's a newer version I need to go grab, or B, just not care in the interest of me being busy. I'm probably going to just not care about it for now. But hey, there we go. Now we know. Sort of.